everyone has secrets. I had an internship at the Daily Mirror. Yeah. And I completed my internship. And the natural progression is to then seek a job as a trainee reporter, right? Um, so there was an opening and I applied for it. And I had an interview with one of the editors. Uh, for legal reasons, I cannot mention his or her name. Um, and I had this interview. So what's, what's their name? I can't. Seriously, bro. No, you have to pay the lawsuit out, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think uh, you've got the money to yeah, do well that. Yeah, with 100,000 YouTube subscribers, <laughs> you should be able to raise that quickly. <laughs> So it was his name Dave. <laughs> no, but anyway, the editor put the CV down and said, "Well, okay, um, what have you really got to offer us? Okay, you've done your internship, you passed your NCTJ. What is it that you're offering us?" And me, being a very, at the time, a very, uh, you know, an idealistic and a, you know, excessively optimistic journalist at the time, thinking I'm going to change the whole way that Islam and Muslims being presented alone. Yeah, mm. I said, "Look, you know, the the, main, the mainstream press is not trusted within Muslim communities." Justifiably, yeah. and so therefore, the Daily Mirror and other mainstream uh, newspapers need to start recruiting Muslims who have a grassroots uh, following or can access the grassroots. Um, so, whenever an incident happens, you can speak to the right people yeah. instead of having to uh, interview the likes of I don't know Quilliam Foundation or uh, you know um, New Horizons for British Islam or British Muslim for Secular Democracy, all puppets and jokers who have absolutely no followings whatsoever have never spoken at a masjid, have never been invited by an ISOC, literally have zero following, they're literally there just to make funding from the government. Mm. She And then this editor turned around and said to me, okay Dilly, but what I'd like you to do, or where I see you, your role in a paper like Daily Mirror, is for you to access your community or communities across the country. Think about it, this is an editor yeah. of a national, news, national tabloid. Yeah. The editor basically said, I see your role in this establishment as someone who can access communities and really tackle the issue of radicalization from within. So I looked at... Being a spook in other words, yeah? Exactly. I'm telling you that I want to report objective, fair news yeah. by accessing mainstream organizations with grassroots following yeah. and that way I can give you the, the real perspective of Muslim affairs. In turn, you have turned around and said to me, that you see my role is essentially uh, surveillance yeah. and accessing my own community and, and basically going to masjids or going to certain events and come back with dirt because someone may have um, said something uh, out of context or take a soundbite from one scholar yeah, or something yeah. like this. I, I looked straight in the face I said, so you want me to be a spy? You want me to spy in my own community? Oh, no, 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 no. Do you look, we do have a radicalization problem. You know this and I know oh. this. And who else better to access it? So the editor was carrying on. Yeah. yeah. I left the room. I left the room and wallahi, from that point onward, I realized that the mainstream media or seeking a career in the mainstream media is something which uh, I will not get that far in. Not with my values and principles and ethics, which is shaped by Islam. I will not be able to do it. I thought I could join a mainstream newspaper or a mainstream channel, uh, change perceptions, mm. you know, give the British public the real perspective of British Muslims, right? By getting the right people to comment, by getting the right people to interview, you know, and I thought, yeah, I could do this. But from that point onward, Deshaun, I've only realized that it is a rigged system. Mm. It's a rigged system. Because what's interesting here is people would look at you and say, oh, here's someone that made it out and, you know, went and worked for this unknown website. Mm. Five, six pillars, five? Five, five pillars, five come pillars. on <laughs> Okay, so what, what's interesting here, people are going to look at what you're doing yeah. uh, and, and say that, look, he made, his, uh, he made his escape. But what's interesting is not everyone's going to take the route that you did. There will actually be, and there are journalists that would say, you know what, if it fills my pockets and lines my pockets, I'll do that. Does do you know personally people who are in the system that this is all they do? You don't have to share their names. There are journalists out there who use their Muslim identity to spy on their community and they know exactly what they're doing. When they attend an Islamic conference and a scholar is talking about a particular aspect of the religion, they will purposely take a five seconds to sandbite, knowing full well that the whole lecture 
contextualize a particular theological position or juristic position and they will go and feed that back to the editors and they'll get a byline and a splash and, and that'll hit the news and before you know it whichever scholar that they decided to malign um, is now an extremist